Hey there folks, I said I'd probably pass some time in campaign, largely looking at a map, and that's what uh, has happened the last episode in early January. Here we are in the, just about in the Ides of March, and we have a battle. It's going to be one of the classic cases of try to survive while hopelessly outnumbered until reinforcements arrive, at which point we should be just fine. So I'm going to go in, do my usual setup, and then bring you back in once things have started. I've been fiddling around a little bit with... The, the settings, the convergence factor between national morale and national support, uh, it doesn't seem as strong as it used to be. Basically, those numbers are supposed to converge towards one another uh, pretty quickly. You're not supposed to have wide divergences. And I noticed in the last few months of 1863, the Union's support was tanking, but its national morale was more or less staying the same. Those two should be, support should be coming up and morale should be going down depending on whichever one is higher and they weren't. So I upped it a little bit. It seemed to have a little bit of effect, but I think I need to probably double, maybe triple what that effect is. It doesn't hit me that much because my support and morale are, are basically the same. And uh, the only the only other thing is, is the convergence towards national wealth. Both are sides national wealth is pretty low i think we're both below 0.4 but i think the union's at around 0.3 and i'm around 0.33 or 0.35 or something like that so uh i don't think that that should be the the, the biggest factor but you know whatever we'll, we'll we'll figure it out eventually and uh i am looking for a way for this campaign to to kind of draw to a close and you see yet again here we have wait a minute oh they're on the opposite side. yeah we had these very small deployment zones this is a mystery Something I must have done when fiddling with the files. But like I said, I'll bring you back when I have something to show you. All right, so I'm bringing you in as things are shaping up. Not all of my core are here. I have one more that's still supposed to be here, but that is what it is. Initially, I played it safe with Johnston, thinking that they might press me, and they wouldn't have had enough time even if they wanted to. Uh, we got Hindman overnight, and then we got Beauregard just after deployment. And so now Heinemann is lining up kind of back here where they happen to have left at least a division. And McClaws here is, you know, for role-playing purposes, we're going to try to put him midway. Johnston's core, as you can see, is shaping up to, to come up here. Heinemann is going to be up here. And then Beauregard is going to be lined up up here near Shelton. Again, how if I can see them, they should be able to see me. And how they cannot see me, I don't. They should reform this, right? The, basically, turn around. But the AI should be able to basically put themselves on an axis like this and and get ready. All right, so Magruder was the last... I think he's the last one I am expecting to arrive, and he's come up with everybody else. So there's a bit of a gaggle up here. Uh, leaving this division, again, facing the completely wrong direction. I mean... Clearly, if I see them, they see me, and I'm pretty sure the AI always knows where you are. Uh, that's why they tend to avoid fortifications that you construct, and that's not the reason I don't do it, but it, the reason I don't do it is that the AI doesn't usually construct as good of fortifications, and so it becomes a one-sided advantage. But uh, these guys should just flip right around. They're not in a terrible defensive position if they could hold both crossings, or right? if they get troops up here, get some troops up here. And get some artillery barking like that they, 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 they could do okay in that that position but just their facing is entirely screwed up and the ai does not react to being flanked quickly enough so it's not as if <clears throat> i'm trying to do that i i'm actually trying to get my forces relatively close together and then pressing one at a time but here the ai is actually in the single line which i've been saying they, they should do for a while not sure that it's it's helped but uh, it hasn't hurt them so far. And with this division out here kind of not doing anything, we got one, two, three, four, five brigades that could go. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have more coming in. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. The, the odds should improve as time goes on. Famous last words, but they should improve as time goes on. And I think McClaws should end up somewhere up here. I gotta figure out what the heck to do with uh, Magruder. I think Magruder is gonna try to close the back door, and so the the south exit is open for them if they take it. All right, so now this is 
very reasonable. And it's not too late. Not at all too late. For the AI. I don't know if I want to get my calves stuck in a crossing. And they could certainly pave the way. Uh, we're going to detach the artillery so that we can give divisional level infantry orders. And we're going to start that by kicking skirmishers out. Okay. And at least the front. I left them in two by one just so we can get a little bit more. Uh, it's not as wide. We're already going to be fairly wide, but we can be a little bit more compact. This artillery is in trouble. Here. Can I? Now, can we alt charge them? Yeah, let's do that. Just because I want them out of here. That's actually a better use, I think, probably for, for Cav, but I don't want the Cav getting last samurai Have they hit? They have not hit the artillery hard. Alright, so if they don't scatter, we'll, we'll scatter them. And I think we can probably just hold right there. Alright, that is that. Robertson's division can push up, and I think Maney is pretty much just... I mean, I got him stuck here. So if they're going to come down and they're going to sit artillery that close to me, we'll definitely go for it. Uh, they have some artillery coming in. Here, we're going to detach this. It's Johnston again, and uh, we'll get him moving. Okay, we'll get those brigades to cross. I'm gonna move them up here. Frost is gonna move up here. Cooper, can we call it skirms and or scouts and he can get in there. Yeah, I think that's how we Oh my goodness, somebody came in for a charge against us. Alright. If that's what they want, we'll give it to him. don't know what that idea is. I don't know why we did that. I think we just called a halt over here. I'm not sure why we're not going through all of that now. Alright, so... I don't know. I'll try to withdraw them. I'm not sure that they'll, they'll actually do it. I guess I should try to keep this to a Divisional attack commands. That gets me away from some of the microing. There we go. The claws, can you do it? Can you do it? Alright, while we're moving these guys, we're going to detach the artillery. Alright, Cooper's coming for that victory point. Herbert is here. Oh, okay. So that's the artillery we need to take from Herbert. And we'll just set them right up there. Put him on attack. We're going to put Johnston on attack. Okay, I'll try to get this cab to come around behind them. Uh... Okay, so it's Maxi's Cav Brigade. Yeah. Let's pull them back. Alright, Frost Division. Can go ahead and go in. Floyd, I don't know about. I'm skeptical that Floyd's going to be able to make it because of uh, 
the forest, and honestly, even this stuff might have... Eh. They, they seem okay rested. Yeah, see, they're already tired. Well, some of them... Actually, most of them are not, so... All right, we have them down to divisional commands, or... Yeah, yeah, it was divisional commands, so that's... That's okay. And we'll see what the AI does with it. This is a bit... A bit awkward on both sides, but it looks like they're making a good move here. And that's because I place these divisions too far apart to kind of help each other. All right, we're gonna move this cab that was looking for a break. I'm rooting for them to get one, but wow, and those guys just broke. I thought they were gonna just start sweeping us left to right here. Not too sure about that, but okay. This is fine back here. This is almost screening at this point. It's a fine defensive position. Alright, we got some business going on over here. Adams Cavalry. Not sure what to do with them. I think it's very, very rough terrain. Maybe they'll have better luck coming around. But for now, let's see what the AI comes up with here. By the AI, I mean my AI. On the attack. This is the move to their front. Don't think we're close enough to be in their back yet. Though apparently we've gotten into something back here. It is, uh... Skirmishers. Alright. Alright, put our cab down there and get them a little bit of cover. It's okay if this develops slow. We're waiting for the back door to close on this flank. You know, it doesn't feel like all their forces are here. It's hard to believe that's 60,000 of them. Alright, over here... It's a slow moving push, but you know, we're out there skirming with them when. Man, eh, maybe it's the right call because, again, we're kind of waiting for all this other stuff to show up. Alright, Adams is there. Cooper has the victory point. That's fine. And what we're going to do. Let's see if Cooper. Yeah, there's support coming. So, Cooper can be the kind of vanguard here. Uh, Frost Division, now you guys are on attack, so go ahead and keep doing that. Yes, like that. And Floyd, it's the same story. No, Cooper, let's, uh, let's get you over here in the field and then get you dismounted. Yeah, this looks more like, I believe they have 60,000. And this is a pretty okay setup now, except that they're going to get pinched in the back. Alright, let's move this calf forward. Alright, so that cab is down. We are getting held up by something back here. What does it show on the map? It's just skirmishers. All 
Alright, so they broke over there. Unfortunately, we got to order these guys back into the woods. Probably the last place they want to be. Alright, order them up there. And order them to come on through there. Johnson's division can push up here. Herbert's can push up there. Alright, Adams is coming around. That's good. I thought there was one more cav brigade I'd given some orders to, but now I can't find them. Doesn't really matter. Come on, guys. Don't don't have it peter out now. This is the, the kind of tough part, but... Alright, good. They found something to shoot at. We'll have these guys try to attack that. We'll just leave Lafayette and McClaws right there. This division just wants to skirm with that, that skirm group. That's not what we need. You gotta have everyone kinda pushing up like that. But I suspect fatigue is kicking in because it is, you know, a heavily wooded map. Rowley's okay. Alright. We got some skirms. Uh maybe that artillery can do something over there. Alright, Herbert, I'm not sure what's up here, but let's get moving. Are these guys exhausted? Eh, they're tired. They're well rested. I thought Bonham would be a lot more beat up than that, but maybe it's just skirmishers he's engaged with. Alright, Cooper's brigade has found targets. And I guess others have found him. Alright. Now we're starting to show up get through Shady Groove. The artillery, and there's a pretty nice spot right here. We'll go ahead and put that there. Okay, that artillery has infantry all in front of it. Okay, Frost Division is like that. That's fine, but we really gotta try to press up with these guys here. Let me check those brigades and see if it's fatigue. Not you, not you, and not you. Robertson's Brigade, keep pushing. They're getting themselves kind of alamode here on the top of the hill. Alright, let's make sure that we're actually in range and hitting someone. Adams is ready to... I guess this is going to end up being the back door here. So, we'll have Adams move this way and uh, try to interdict some of that, they're not... Uh, okay, so Adams is under McCullough. I thought I ordered some cav over here. I don't see the mate. I probably got him killed. Mm. Alright, 
Floyd is here, so Floyd, you go right on in. Looks like they're trying to withdraw, so don't let them do that. And honestly, at this point, I'd say, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> that is not what I meant to do. I meant to send Frost's division this way, and then have Floyd's actually try to move around like this. Yeah, we don't... These guys can stop and shoot right there, because they're going to end up in melee if people run through them. Alright. So now we got to kind of anticipate where we think they're going to go. Buckner Sr.'s division can go there. You two actually don't have to go anywhere. You can stop right there. And you can stop right there. And then Holmes's division, you do the same thing. All right. All right. Now we're down to about the good old 12 frames. <laughs> I was saying in the previous episode there that that was a lot of snow on that battlefield, and there were a lot of troops and mist, fog, whatever. But I was getting about twice as many frames with about as many troops on the field, so... Not sure why they went down when conditions improved, but... It's a mystery. Alright, there's a little bit of micro. Dreaded infantry micro. Cavalry mac uh, micro we've left, left ourselves the the fun of having, but generally we're trying to use divisional level orders, commands, formations, all that stuff. Uh, if you're going to go into melee, and I do not recommend you do, but if you've already made that decision, Alright, right now you're just getting chewed up, man. I don't know what you're thinking. You really, really want melee with someone. I don't know. You're a good brigade. I don't know if that's a good idea. Alright, it's time for McClaws to give an order. We'll start with everyone on attack. You know what, we got these guys moving backwards. Let's not wait for that. Let's just go full assault. Oh, this did turn out to be a good position here. Alright, they're, they're off on their own. A blood feud with everyone. Alright, well if you're going to charge, at least do it the right way. Let's speed this up a little bit. Just because they're pretty much in fallback and route mode. Now because we're in such close contact, there's this really long timer. I don't know what the, the old AI is going to do. But we'll watch it in this kind of stop animation 
almost Benny Hill sequence. Yeah, it's rough when that was your, your retreat path, I guess. Otherwise, yeah, it is it is this gap over here. You can run through the woods. Alright, they're resetting. They're 3v1ing them. That that's that is our forces. Wow, so anybody left over here? Oh, they got kinda of stuck in that pocket. Come on, McLaws. Ooh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, I just meant to move him, not order everybody in. But uh you know that that might work too. Yeah, these Shank looks like he might get away and uh Third Brigade beat Cook's Brigade. Yikes! <laughs> Yikes! I re I legitimately thought it was going to be closer than that. Uh, I did not expect almost a 10 to 1 with 140,000 troops engaged, but... Hey, remember, this campaign, the AI has no more bonuses than I do. They pretty much order the same weapons I do. Uh, and I don't take any perks. So, at least not for my land forces. The Navy might, might have them. Uh, so that those are all efforts to, to keep it close, but I think their morale is really what's what's just driving them down. So even if they can get decent numbers, it's just rough. And you can see the AI is still still struggling in battle to after all this time to kind of get the right facing and uh, yeah, put up put up a better fight. All right, what'd we do? 800, so for them, 800 plus 10,000. So basically 11,000 of them are not coming back. And for us, it's 423 ain't coming back, plus whatever missing and wounded don't return. We had a crap load of rifles. I Yeah, I don't know what to do with the, the surplus weapons. I, I wish there was something to do with it. Either give it up uh, to like local militia and have it increase state support or civil order or something like that or give it to the Europeans to improve relations or something like that. You know, it's it's notable that they have the option for a European intervention, but they don't really have an option for a separate Native American intervention. And uh, there, there's not much more to that idea other than it's that, that observation than it's just that observation, but that would seem to be a, a more interesting one to do but you can already recruit Native American units to, to your forces so that that part is in the game but I don't know what is that is that that's oh, Fort Monroe it, it's garrison size I think is all wrong I thought there were a lot more troops in that but yeah the the group that's blown them up. I mean, that's a lot of wood. <laughs> All the cotton clads they've taken from me. Oh my goodness, that's that's why I can't beat that fleet. It's because all their cotton clads ram my cotton clads, and uh, yeah, it's just one big mess. But cotton clads are terrible at attacking forts. Right? They they're very good at ramming wooden ships. That 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 they do exceedingly well. Other things not. Not so much. All right. We're not out of... Let's speed this up here. It looks like they moved us a bit further here on the right. I don't know why that is. National Round support ticked down for them. Okay. I was going to wait and see how April ends in terms of their support and morale. But once we're out of Winter Quarters, I know they're already on the move, but I'm thinking of launching... Attack right through here, right down the pike. Is this the big second court? No, that's a. I think that's a small second court. Yeah, 
it's a small psych core. So they're going to go do what they want to do. As long as things don't get... Well... I think the Army of Delaware can be beaten just by Johnston. And maybe we'll send everyone else over here at this first core. I think over in Tennessee, we're also going to try to slap them off. I think there's also a second core over here that has built a supply depot. Yep. <laughs> so there is something about second cores in the Union Army that just love building supply depots. Trapier? I don't even remember Trapier being wounded. Oh, you got to be kidding me. They, they've they done... I have not seen that much, but they did tell me that the Union was planning a... a it said a sea invasion, but it looks like the direction came down from elsewhere, so... I don't know what the idea is here. I mean, you got to be out of supply. A 7,500-man force? Maybe it's a raiding force? Uh, but I'm not getting any notifications that a raid has started, so that's that's questionable. And I guess our, our music, I guess our, our band got a little bit tired, so they needed a break. Okay. All right. Come on, April for seat. Now, you know what? If they're going to go all the way up there... Maybe let them and just deal with the giant second core down there that even with a supply depot still says it's out of supply. All right, so winter quarters is over. Stop, stop, stop. There we go. And we're just going to throw, we got 19,000. All right, you go there. Uh, what are you, Ferguson's core? So I think we end up with just a 20V or 40V40. I don't think there's a third core that's there. Pawn Jr., I would doubt is going to be able to do anything here. We'll see. Yes. Take that order. So where where is Pawn Jr. going? Or what is the Army of North Carolina? So nothing. Just go. All right, we'll see how that goes. For here, Johnston, after all this time, as good as you're supposed to be, we're getting nowhere. Beauregard, Magruder. See, combined, they have only as much as the Union, but I don't really feel like waiting for Hindman. So I think we're gonna tr we're gonna press our lock. Oh, whoops! Speaking of whoops, before I do another one. Okay. All right, they'll get there when they get there, which probably won't be for a while. Over here. Yep. Yeah, let's just throw them out. How big is it? 28,000. All right. Overwhelming force it should be, uh, which is going to be Bragg and Robertson. That should be fine for that. Over in Arkansas, Missouri, there's nothing really to write home about. Oh, except we've fallen out of supply, at least temporarily. There's no supply depot here, so we'll... We'll get working on one. Usually these aren't, you know, for total expenses, which by the way, my budget is almost balanced because I just stopped pretty much all my subsidies. So, hooray. Uh, yeah. Interest rate is fine, probably because they see that, you know, we're not likely to take on a whole lot more debt. So the creditors are like, all right, we'll, we'll keep lending at a little bit less risky rate. And uh, all right. Uh, changes, changes. All right, so their national morale ticked down a little bit. My support ticked down a little bit. That's probably due to Virginia. All right, it's not. Well, Tennessee is 87, but Tennessee's not not usually as high as some of the other places. I'm just surprised it's so low in in Virginia. But yeah, if you're counting West Virginia, is still part of Virginia. A lot of that is now gone. What are we doing here? Uh, you know what? For right now, we're gonna we're gonna go deploy to defend. And I I know Heinemann just came into the yellow here. 
Ooh. Come on, let me click. God, man. There we go. Just go. Hopefully you can figure out what you need to do there. All right, so we're deploying to defend sieges. Where is that? Oh, that's over here. Okay, I got my battles. My battles mixed up. Uh, all right, at 35 minutes, it is it is too early to call it a video. So we gotta we gotta hop into this one and uh, see what we can do. But it, it's gonna be one of those we gotta wait for reinforcements before we can uh, press on in. All right, and so what was in certainly one of the stranger battles? It was the wilderness. It was the pits, and I don't know. I had one army. They were sitting on... They got Wilderness Tavern. It said meeting engagement, but it was basically the Union were right on it. And, uh... Yeah. I started moving my armies in. It was almost the end of the first day. And in the redeployment phase, all three armies would have been in position. It would have been about 50-50 in terms of manpower. Even though they were sitting on that 10 point all day, it still had me a slightly ahead. So I assume that had to do with morale... Uh, but I was actually just going to, I was going to let that one run as just AI run. Like I was not going to do any, I was going to set the armies up. I was going to tell, I think it was, Mc, I don't know, McClaws or whoever it was in, in no, it wasn't McClaws. Uh, whoever was the army commander, <coughs> just tell them, you know, go attack, go assault, whatever, whatever. Uh, with the first quarter turn. A remarkable strategic victory. Um, probably not, but whatever. That was this one up here. I think that was this one up here. I don't know. I have, as is my custom, confused myself, so let's try to get you all in. But you know, actually, that was that here? I bet that was there. Uh, so then... Now this one, they think I'm going to win. So if that's the case, I don't know. I don't know if I really feel like fighting it. Granted, if I got on the battlefield, I'd probably do a lot more. But... Feels unnecessary. All right, we had the supply depot, so... We could... You know, I, I feel if we go up for this, they're just going to run right down here and, and take this out. But it is what it is. Uh, Johnston's almost in a position that he can start. All right, so we won. I think this is what they're talking about. What is, where is this? Is this over in Kentucky, that that, that second core? Uh, we'll put on deploy to defend. The other forces can draw in, and we'll, we'll just see how that one runs. It's possible if I fought some of these and just got crushing victories, we'd actually end the campaign in this episode. And I, I am not trying to draw this out to another episode, but it would also, if I had to fight two or three of these battles, it would definitely go long. And so I'm calculating that if we just win enough of these, even through auto-resolve, we should be able to tip them. I forget if the breaking point is 50 or 45. It will be a surprise to all, but we'll see. All right, so we won the auto resolve over here in Kentucky. Zero surprises given. Uh, yeah. Okay, you move up there, you move up there. Uh, is it worth it? Louisville and Fort Wayne. That must be a Union one. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, we can certainly upgrade prisons. What? Clearly, it's been a while since I've done this. Prisons, prisons, prisons. I thought that's where they always showed up. Wouldn't make any sense to be in goods and trade. I think hospitals, lumber mills, factories, market mills, mines, plantations, port, prison camps. Okay. Uh. Okay, so that's level.
Do I just need to build new ones? Apparently they all got built down here. I don't I have no idea what that's about. Uh okay. Build some more. It's fine. Sure, million dollars. Million dollars. I know they said we don't need any more, but I don't feel like doing it again. Um, what else? Did they did they burn that supply depot after I captured it? Uh oh. This is a battle we might actually have to fight. I was trying to avoid this too, man. You know what? It's it's going to be in Chancellorsville. It's almost, it's just about guaranteed. So it's going to be 72,000 of them versus 60,000 of us. Uh, you know, I, we're going to, what? I guess they did not like that answer. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like deploy to defend kind of gives an advantage to the side with more artillery, but not always. Did, did we, ag we actually just won that, so. Rough for them. And I've only been moving armies up here since April April 1st, since we got out of the kind of winter session there. How are we? They seem in good spirits. So I wonder if we just do a bit of an offensive, we can break their morale. Are you... I don't know what you're all doing. First score... See, that's pretty big. But it's also isolated. We'll, we'll, we'll try it. Let's see what we get. Okay. They're going to move there. Uh, hopefully we don't get too stuck up here. That just looks like a lot of troops, man. A lot of out-of-supply troops. I don't know. Do we just YOLO into that? Right, get out of the way, Russo. I actually did put in orders for another cotton clad armada, so I don't know how far along those orders are. Uh yeah, they're not well, that frigate ain't ours. Uh rest of that is yes, yeah, so they're a little over halfway done, but they're gonna be a while. Alright, we can put Johnson to scouting and Maybe he can deal with that later. Maybe he can't. We'll we'll find out. Oh, okay. That's where we'll go. That is fine. Yes, go there. What? Yes. I, sometimes I get the the roots of supply mixed up with the other stuff on there. What am I seeing now? Hampton's division. That should be such an easy win. So we'll probably lose when I do this, but. I don't know why they keep asking me twice for all those auto resolves. The claws get in there. That's your force. Johnston, I think I can move you here without you falling out of yellow. Up, oh, third core came and left. How big is this third core? They're moving so fast. I can't even tell. There we go. 24,000. All right, Pond Jr., do what you can. How did we all... Oh, because we lost the stupid supply depot because he must have touched it barely. All right, up here... All right, we won this, but... what? What's over here? Hold on. 12,000? Let's just go for these guys. Jeez, everyone wants that supply depot. Holy moly. How you doing? You're doing okay. 
Yes! <laughs> yes! Finally! It's over. The campaign. So maybe I was a little excited for, for this one to end. But, okay. You, you've, already, you've already told me once. And, uh... Yeah, nobody cares. Uh, so... Yeah, national morale break, I guess, was 50. And that... I don't know. That, that seems like how the war went. I mean, right? 263,000 casualties on their side. 145,000 casualties on mine. Economy-wise, we were much closer than we should have been. That was even with uh, all the AI policies I, I gave uh, the AI personality to improve their economy. Yeah, morale and support kind of started to dwindle down a very little bit towards the end, but that was mostly just due to Virginia. Battles won 101 to 34. So, I, I mean, you all can read. So, it is it is what it is. Uh, some, some final thoughts on the campaign. It... It, it was this was the best campaign I've I've ever played uh, in in over a thousand hours and now I think we're over three years on this channel. Uh, so the AI held up better. It, it still needs to do other things, right? I, battle AI. Every episode I, I kind of have my critique. Every once in a while it's pretty good, but it, it needs to get a little bit more predictably good. And, it, and it's stuff that's just been in the game for for years. The the no perks thing I think leveled the playing field and kept things closer than it would have been. I mean, if I had gone for all the best perks on those land forces, you know, at the level of the core or the army, and then at the level of the brigade, I mean, it would have just snowballed advantages on, on advantages. The, the naval aspect, as you saw, actually the Union was turning it around in the end, especially since they got a bunch of my cotton clad rams. But I also wonder if they were dumping a lot of money into uh, in into their navy, which is really not what they wanted, what they needed to do. What the Union armies in the center were doing, I have no idea. I mean, finally by 1864, they actually had a force in Missouri that, if they added a bit more to it, could have pushed into Arkansas. It would have been a, probably around 50-50 or so. But there was a path open, but it, it was just completely neglected by by the AI, uh, and that's yeah. It, 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 there's something going on, and, and the fault here is probably mine. I, I have changed, but I don't know why. I've changed the importance calculations so that on the campaign level, the AI cares more about population centers and about armies rather than the national capital. And, and yet it seemed like it gravitated towards the least populated areas. And so there, there's still some fine-tuning. I have to get right or they have to get right or somebody has to get right. And then, again, the inability to kind of launch simultaneous campaigns. I know folks in, I think, Discord, maybe even on the Steam discussions, have said that you know they've had some recent CSA campaigns where the Union actually launched attacks in multi-theaters simultaneously. I would welcome others to, to confirm that that is the case and that they're seeing it fairly regularly because that's what that's what needs to happen. Otherwise, as the CSA, particularly in the center and the west, you can shuffle troops between Tennessee and Arkansas as long as you hold the railway, the railroads that run east-west and a few of those crossings. So Memphis is one of them and there are some others. But as long as you can shuffle troops back and forth there, it's easy to be outnumbered overall, but then at the actual uh, theater level, and particularly when you get into battles, you, you could have uh, greater numbers. There always seems to be a much wider divide in, in the East. And what I, I don't think the Union was trying to drive a wedge between the Eastern and what I'll call Central theaters, but Tennessee and, and Virginia. Though, in fact, that's what they did because those armies, particularly, I would say, from 1862 on, they really could not move to support each other, but it felt like we had them pretty well bottled up in a low supply area. The AI responded by building supply depots, uh, I think frequently reasonably, but I just don't know why they had so many armies sitting in Ohio, Indiana, n barely in northern Kentucky and not pressing. And they were there, it felt like, for years. Sometimes they would shuffle towards West Virginia and then back, but they never really did anything with them. And... Uh, there were a couple of concerted... There was the one concerted push. I, I don't know if it was... I think it was this episode uh, where they sent a couple of core to to Richmond. Uh, but we were able to kind of 
collapse on them from, from behind. But more of that concentrated action among armies within a theater and then between theaters, particularly for the Union when they're the AI, and then on the battlefield, all that, that stuff I talked about. But having said that, it this is the kind of campaign I've been trying to build. It's been that grindy campaign where you can't just rest on something being declared a major victory, even if it really wasn't, or on some other weird quirk in the game. Uh, you actually got to inflict casualties. You got to hold territory, whether you're attacking or defending. Uh, and economically, you got to try to stay afloat. And that, that last part was the, the least bad problem for us. Uh, so that, I think, shows how little we were stressed. I could try to make the economy stuff matter more as it affects national morale. But if I'm better at managing the economy than the AI, AI then it becomes another deficit to the AI. Uh, and I've tried to eliminate both their advantages and, and as many disadvantages as I can uh, to try to just see, you know, how well can, can a truly vanilla AI do, one that doesn't have a whole lot of inherent advantages or disadvantages, and just what needs to be tweaked are whatever the background calculations are that work at the campaign and, and the battle level. So it was a long campaign, so I feel like that, I, don't know, I think that was a sub 10 minute conclusion, pretty much summarizes it. For those of you who uh, weathered the campaign and made it all the way here, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will look to get these files up. I think it's been probably two months or so since I updated the files in the Google Drive for the settings I have. But I wanted to play this through to the end to see that it was actually a, a kind of a viable campaign. Of course, the one big missing thing was the European intervention. But again, with a, a 35 point lead in morale, I don't, I don't really think it would have mattered. And uh, so I didn't do it. But I, I have created some of those additional British forces. And then it's just using the same tactic to increase the Spanish forces potentially French forces as, as well. I think the Europeans are a better counter to uh, a Union campaign. And, you know, if the Union campaign is the next one I do, I don't know if it's going to be a Union campaign or if we're going to do a, uh, well, a, a, a kind of regular Union campaign or if we're going to do a Whiskey and Lemons Union campaign. I'm... Uh, I haven't made up my mind. I, I'm pretty sure I could... Basically, all these settings would carry over, and then it's just whiskey and lemons, but you play in career mode. The career mode is great, but it's it, it tends to go quite quickly in terms of how, how campaigns unload. The CSA AI frequently, I think, does well at the campaign level, uh, and, and its economy decisions are, are as, as good as they can be. I think sometimes they just get worn down. But if I do that campaign without perks, and when I get at the tactical level, I really like, by the way, the divisional level stuff. Just like I think the AI works best at the divisional level, I I think delegating orders at, at the divisional level is is probably the the more fair, or the better way to micro it. Turning it purely over to your AI's top commander and just giving a general order I feel like at that point, why even, why even play, right? You're then, then you're just kind of doing all the background stuff, and you know it, it can be fun to watch, but it's also kind of painful. And so I, I like the divisional level microing, if if you call it that, and then uh, just just only allowing myself the uh, the fun of microing cav brigades. So, yeah, we'll wrap it here, and uh, yeah, whatever comes next, I hope to bring you back for that.